Hello, everybody. Today, I have a very special person as my guest for this conversation. I'm going to be taking um, a, a very nice session with our young and dynamic leader from uh, the Chittur plant, Ananta Lakshmi G. You're very familiar with her uh, and her enigmatic presence. Is, is my guest for the day. And it is my pleasure to be interacting with her uh, to systematically demolish the bias for the day. The bias, as you all know, for the, this year's Women's Day is women don't need to be as educated as men. And who better to demolish that than the guest on this call and conversation, Anant Lakshmi Ji. Anant, for the rest of you and to me, a very warm welcome to you, Anand. It's good to have you on this conversation. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, hi, hello to everyone and uh, happy Women's Day celebration week to one and all. Um, today we are here, as uh, Sanjay explained to you, to speak about the bias. Women need not be as educated as men. Let me start with a famous quote. Uh, said by one of the popular chief economists of the World Bank that investment in girls' education may well be the highest return investment available in the whole world. For many years now, the world has been thinking and talking about women education and rights. The good news is, worldwide, women today are far more educated than at any point of time in history. But we still are not as educated as men. Today, we are going to talk about that. My career in uh, Hero and even before that, uh, during my uh, schooling, has been uh, far more cherishing. So to say, um, practically, I haven't faced any such biases that I could share with you. But yes, I have heard about many. Starting from the school to the professional world, every girl aspires to have many dreams. And for all these things, having a supportive family and having a meaningful conversation about your dreams and aspirations is very essential. They say a child starts dreaming from the very first day it enters a school. For many, it keeps changing. For many, it remains and ends up in dreams itself. I am very fortunate for all that I have. Now, Sanjayji, while we are on the topic, uh, let, let me ask you, as to what all have been uh, your experiences in, in your uh, you know, past three decades that you have seen, how uh, women in the corporate world have increased? So Anand, before I respond to your question, I want to first of all compliment you because you started this conversation in true finance specialist style, quoting the World Bank um, uh, gentleman with his quote. I mean, that, that's absolutely a fantastic one, and I completely resonate with that. I think um, I will go even deep, deeper. You know, as, as kids, we used to we used to talk about the hand that cradles, uh, that hand that moves the cradle, actually rules the world, right? And that is in another context. But the truth of the matter does remain that perhaps the most significant impact on society, whether it is from an economic point of view or a social point of view. Has that been of the predominant role of women in our society? And proud as I am, and I'm sure as you are, of being an Indian, we have a rich legacy of uh, women goddesses that we pre, uh, you know, pray to, be it the Saraswati, the goddess of uh, learning, or be it the Lakshmi, as your name goes, the goddess of wealth and prosperity. And or Durga, the goddess of power. So for a country like ours, we have a rich heritage where women have been celebrated. And it is a bit of an oxymoron when, when you, you know, consider the bias that we are trying to breach and break in this conversation. Uh, but things as they are, uh, we need to be responding to what the uh, world at large looks at these and how they see these things. And therefore, uh, our job today in this conversation will be to Look at how the world has moved. And going back to the question, I think your question is actually emanating from that. And over the last three decades, how have I seen this piece playing out? I think what has happened structurally in, in, in terms of 
women colleagues or women employees within the organization system i think the aspiration aspiration has seen a leap frog you know you know you used to have colleagues in in various departments and sections who were just happy coming to the office and doing their job for the day right i don't think they had severe um, compulsions or they had severe aspirations to move up the ladder very rapidly but increasingly over the years i have noticed that more and more people youngsters coming in wanting to go and break the ceiling the glass ceiling right on top move to the cabin at the corner i think that's that's started happening and that's a great piece of um, that's a great piece of evolution i would say so i have seen aspirations take a massive spin upward which is phenomenal given the given the challenge that we have had as an organization unit not just at hero but as a nation uh, wherein women were generally content in doing the jobs that they were basically uh, given assigned and they did a fantastic job so typically if you ever wanted to have somebody to do some of your secretarial work you would rather trust a lady to do that because she was very sincere on the spot uh, stick stuck to her time completely committed and you know that's where it ended you know the aspiration even from the ladies wasn't as high perhaps the opportunities weren't there the reality of the matter is the uh, the organization systems and again i'm not just talking about hero but um, beyond hero the organization systems have evolved and realized the potential that women have and the capabilities that they can bring as a consequence of that women have stopped being content with what they're you know offered as opportunities and have strived for greater aspirations and that's something absolutely encouraging i think you are a shining example of uh, something like that happening at such a young age to become the head of finance for a plant independently i think uh, speaks volumes about the opportunity uh, that came your way and the way you kind of grabbed at it and have been doing an absolutely brilliant job so that's how things have moved aspirations have evolved and the women ability to kind of reach out to those aspirations has also uh, absolutely Uh, been in sync with that increased aspiration absolutely uh, like you're saying uh, firstly thank you for your compliments and at the same time i i totally resonate to what you say and and trust that uh, you know women education uh, obviously brings miracles within the family and the society they live in but at the larger picture it also helps in in um, you know changing the entire economy it even strengthens the economy how so because a woman a, a woman who is educated Uh, have more say in their lives and they have an increased sense of what they are worth of and what their capabilities are and hence they are subjected you know they are less likely to be subjected to the domestic violence and they participate in the decision making of of uh, the corporate of even even the whole country uh, now we have several examples of of you know the women politicians who are who are ruling many of the countries across the globe and and definitely uh, i i i totally believe that you would agree to if i say that uh, you know the, the sense uh, the leadership style of, of you know masculine and feminine are are totally different and and they are uh, proving the theories no absolutely i think um, that's the that's the beauty of diversity i guess um, you know each one of us is crafted differently there is uh, there is this whole way that uh, a male is crafted and the way a female is crafted for example one thing that i find personally very unique in the uh, in the in the dna crafting of women is the ability to multitask <laughs> i i don't think they i would know of many people who can who can uh, send their kids to school then cook their get their breakfast ready and you know said you know make their tiffin boxes and then uh, make a dash to the office finish the work come back home and take care of the house and i think that's something that's incredible that's something that uh that really tells you that there is something very very unique and distinctive about the ability of women to be able to do uh things like that in a fabulous manner something that males have always struggled with i don't think that is something that uh, the male folk should take great pride in they should try and work harder to figuring out ways to do that a little more uh agile uh, in a very more a little more agile manner uh, and i think uh, that's something that they need to learn from women so coming back i know while you mentioned that um, you have had a relatively blessed um, you know uh, situation that you've come from and you didn't have to face too many biases and challenges but i'm sure you must have seen stuff around you between maybe from heard from your friends and 
our experience through you, some of your relatives. Uh, what kind of biases have uh, uh, that you you kind of kind of noticed um, in their growing up time, and uh, and particularly in the context of the bias for the day, uh, which is that women don't need to be as educated as men. Did you ever meet someone, or have you known of people who have had to uh, live with this challenge? Yes, Sanjay. So uh, in in many ways, I would I would say that you know all these uh, biases that we are speaking of uh, one way or the other it originates at home it's it's the way you know uh, when you have a son versus a daughter uh, the way they have been treated uh, that you know uh, women have girls have always been told that you you have to take care of the kitchen you you are to respect others of course most of them are good things but then uh, for a girl to uh, go up in the next ladder to go to school and to express herself that's that's uh way much uh, you know uh, that's driven by the way she's she has been taught at home which is which is the first place and um yes there are many such instances but fortunately since i have been in india all throughout i can say that the society i have been brought up uh, and and the generation which i am seeing right now is is i understand quite different from what we had years before now men and women have equal opportunities it is up to them to learn to know their self worth and and to you know uh, express themselves completely and grab all the opportunities that and even to create the opportunities for that matter no oh, indeed i i i completely agree i think in today's world that we live in uh, from the world that we were exposed to earlier on things have really evolved rapidly and i'm happy this evolution is something that is more than welcome uh, it's all about equal opportunities i think for Uh, when we hire today uh, in 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 my area of work um, the mandate is very simple it is it is gender agnostic so it doesn't matter if there's a country manager we have a good profile and i'm happy to tell you that we've just hired somebody in mexico uh, for sales and uh, she is a lady so well why can't she do that job uh, which typically would in the good old world would probably have had an um, you know if not explicitly stated but perhaps they would have in a bit of a bias towards the fact that you know end of the day a sales job is tight for uh, is 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 a bit tight for ladies maybe we should not really look at a lady i think those things have evolved the 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 mindsets have changed and i think um, um, some of us and i would i would tend to believe a lot of us are actually trying to uh, you know be a part of that particular change i think the best way to deal with change is to embrace it uh, and uh, run with it now so i guess things have really moved very very rapidly so uh, you know i know that uh, given that uh, we've talked a bit about it uh, earlier on but i would i would want to want us to go back to the theme or the the bias for the day and you know just call it out and um, you know try and uh, rephrase it because contextually there was something interesting that we had done a long time back when we la- launched our f- uh, scooter uh, called pleasure i don't know if uh, you would be familiar with that um, scooter of course you must be familiar with because that's something that we make continue to make uh, this was launched in 2016 which is almost what 2006 16 years ago um, around the same time of the year about january of 2006 when we launched our scooter we called pleasure and uh, it almost um, uh, when you when you look at the bias for the day it's almost it's almost really calling that out 16 years ago women don't need to be as educated as men uh, is on the same genre as why should boys have all the fun and uh, in that sense what does it really mean to you when when you hear this what does it mean to you what does it leave you with what is the kind of uh, expression uh, you have uh, what are the kind of emotions that evoke in your mind uh right uh, speaking of uh, the hashtag that you mentioned and the recent campaign that they are running that you know the ladki chala rahi hai right. uh, all those events of hero uh, they essentially um, you know give give us a question whether uh, you know are women being uh, uh, kept given any special privilege than what men have 
or or is it is it essential uh, of course it is because women and men like i said in the current scenario you would you would know that you know all of us are working hard all of us are, have a common common aim but uh, are the equal opportunities given to both of us that's that's the fundamental question which starts right from the school so for for so many reasons like i said starting from the family to the society we live in many many women uh, maybe not in the in our society but but across have have this uh, problem of of not being given the equal opportunity so how does um, how do we break this bias is by uh, you know uh, making them feel comfortable when 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 they are taking one step uh, the men or or even the women who are currently there in in the corporate or who have achieved that heights should make them comfortable should should give them uh, the space that uh, you know wherein they realize their true potential and and they grow higher and higher so uh, i think uh, yeah that's that's the way and I, i'm sure hero is in the right track fantastic that's that's good to hear i think that's very encouraging and that gives me honestly a lot of hope going forward um, because it just means that probably we are on the right track like you mentioned but just to follow up on what you just said and i'm i'm going to ask you to push you a little to tell me a little more about if you think we are in the right direction and you feel that as an organization we are trying to rise to the occasion and the challenge um why don't you share some of your thoughts about how we can support mentor or elevate more women to leadership positions in the company and how and if if that be the mandate and what would your thoughts be and how would you want that to happen right so um now that we are speaking of the uh, professional corporate part of it what what hero can mo- do more uh, an organization is definitely dependent on uh, you know the manager that you are working with or the team that you are working with in in the larger uh, aspect so uh, women are uh, slightly different to men because they have uh, you know in addition to the professional life that they have to deal with they also have their uh, you know personal responsibilities which which is gradually changing as time passes but but for many it still persists so uh, in in that occasion say for instance uh, a woman gets married and 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 they are focusing on the other phases of life like like if they have children or other responsibilities the um, the organization should should be you know comfortable enough to give them the privilege to maybe leave on time and then do their uh, work related uh, things even after uh, when there is a due date of course you need to abide by it and and that's for sure but uh, yeah these are some of the uh, comforts that the organization is doing and and should continue to do uh, in future and uh, other than that um, of course uh, i read about so many things like uh, you know there are wages inequality uh, among the women and all those things and i'm sure when when the women know their worth and over a period of time with the support of of you know uh, all the organizations a uh, leadership people uh, of course will be able to bridge all those things i'm glad you mentioned the balance that needs to be driven uh, professional and personal life and i think it's a very important aspect and then again it's completely gender agnostic it's not just about women having to do deal with it traditionally yes in the older world yes but today's time and things are getting it's all about equal opportunity it's all about women actually trying to forge ahead and move on and therefore there is a need for both the sides both males as well as women to kind of find this balance between personal and professional life i'm going to spin this a little backward on what you said and go back to women and try and say what typical challenges let's say i know that you know while you didn't have any biases growing up and you didn't have a challenge like that but i'm sure that you would have noticed it with your friends or others around you they would have kind of had that challenge and you talked about it so what are the various challenges you would have had you would you would presume would be need to be resolved to bring this balance between personal and professional life uh, in your journey and in your aspirations to move into leadership roles 
right uh, so the fundamental thing is 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 all about mindset yeah it's it's about what uh, you think the uh, the roles and responsibilities of a girl are versus what a boy is so if if a parent is going to think that uh, eventually the girl is going to get married and she she is going to settle elsewhere he he or she might or might not be interested in educating her in the first place so uh, change the mindset there there are so many families who who may or may not have son but their daughters are taking good care of them even even better care so uh, it, it, everything needs to start right from the family and the mindset that uh, uh, you know we need to change and uh, uh, of course we are standing in a scenario where where in many many areas things have changed we are given the opportunities and for over there uh, the girls need to understand that that you know the world is filled with opportunities and they can dream as much as they can and and there's always a way to achieve that so uh, yes they need to identify their strengths uh, grab every opportunity be brave and confident and embrace their strength as well as the weakness i think that's the way to go if i have got your answer right what i've heard you talk about is that it would need to start with a mindset we will all have to invest in building the right amount of mindset to a accept the fact that uh you know there is this opportunity um equation which is very favorable or equal at least equal if not favorable uh in in terms of the opportunity for growth in careers and moving ahead in the corporate world uh, so we need to have that mindset as a as a as a unit as a family unit to foster that thinking and support them in ways that perhaps traditionally were not available right and i'll go back to this um, um earlier articulation that i had where uh, when i was talking about in the context of the ability to multitask i think uh, the mindset now needs to really be uh, the onus now needs to be on the male folk to believe that they can also multitask and it's not and you know if if there's a guest coming home um it's just not the daughter's job to get some water for the guest it's also the son's job and some of these small things are extremely important and um, and that's where the change will start happening uh, what do you say to that anand absolutely absolutely mr sanjay i think structurally we will all have to work uh, to this purpose and um, make sure we bring in those little changes in the way things have been traditionally versus what they need to be going forward so one um, maybe towards the end because um, i think we are kind of getting close to the time we have uh, for this conversation although i would love to continue having this conversation perhaps offline sometime whenever you back in delhi or i am traveling to chitur it will be fun to catch up with you but one last last question that i have in my mind and that's more um, in the context of your own personal aspirations uh as a young professional leading a, a absolutely extremely high responsibility role uh, as the head of uh, plant finance what would your message be to all the young girls ladies as you may want to call them out there who are there in the ecosystem at hero what would you want to tell them about their future and how they're going to move this uh, you know move on, move apart in this you know hierarchy and ladder proper growth what would be your mantra uh, and and message a short nice uh, important i'm sure that they will hold it in great value a uh, message to all the youngsters yeah so um what would i like to say to all the women uh, we are standing in in a generation where uh, you know we we have wonderful support system whom we can uh, you know go and talk to whom we, whom we can vent upon whether whether it's our family whether whether it's our office colleagues what's important is to have an open communication whether it's your parent whether it's your husband or whether it's your manager to to tell them what your problems are and and there there always exists a solution um, each of us are unique and um, i think that is what the world wants the world needs to see is is already seeing but it still needs to see what what it would look like to have more and more women in in the top leadership position when uh, a woman can run a family uh, as a mother she definitely can do much more wonders whether it's in the corporate or or across the nation so yeah i i think that there is some very profound words you use there you talked about 
openness of communication you talked about share free feel free to express yourselves and um, and it would be exciting and i think i'm quite i'm quite excited about the possibility to see a world where uh, actually there are more and more women trying to drive things in different spheres and it's not there's any dearth right now in fact some of the top corporates are being led by women uh, not to mention some of the heads of state governments are women today and that's a matter of great pride for for the entire world and that's that's the uh, that's the world that we are we are now living in and that's a world that will make it even more interesting going forward but one thing that i would like to say in conclusion and i can't hold myself back because i i remember that as an organization we we've done our bit we tried to make our initial early steps when probably the world was not even uh, aware and wasn't woken up to this whole new thing and i go back to the launch of pleasure scooter with when we said what we said so in end i would just say to the same young ladies my message to them would be karo wo jo chahe man why should boys have all the fun thank you very much it's been a wonderful conversation with you anand and i wish you the very best and hope to see you soon sometime good luck and all the very best on this women's day fantastic thank you thank you so much good luck